Hey everybody, I am here to give you a brief tutorial about how I do um, the line art on my vector stuff. Because I oftentimes have people who ask me, hey, how exactly did you do that? I'm like, hey, I use Flash, and nobody seems to believe me. But um, So what I'm going to do is just very briefly go over how I would begin doing one of my vector jobs. Um, pretty easy stuff. Uh, it just takes a little bit of practice, and uh, I'll give you some tips about things you should and shouldn't do, etc. So first, let me open up Flash. I just use Flash 8 because it doesn't take up as much resources, and I don't know. First thing I want to do is make sure after I create my new document to set my screen dimensions to whatever I want. Uh, in this case, I've just set mine to 1440 by 900 for like a widescreen wallpaper. Uh, but if you're doing uh, any type of, type of um, drawing that you've scanned in that you want to do, you know, you can pretty much fudge the dimensions and then just tell it that you want to export the. Um, minimum image area instead. But anyway, uh, so first things first, you want to figure out what image it is you want to um, do. If you're actually vectoring an image, that is. You could also use this technique for your own original art um, created from scratch. But in this case, I'm just going to grab an old piece of art I had that I scanned in that was inked. Um, from three years ago, um, ugh, almost four years ago. Um, so I have my image here, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. After I bring my image in, um, the first thing I do is lock that layer after I'm satisfied with where it's located, and figure out how exactly I want to um, go about doing this. So in this case, I've already done this kind of thick outline around it, but I'm not sure if that's what I want to do this time around, so I'll just kind of fudge it and see what happens. Um, when I'm doing a vector job, I always will um, use the pencil tool. Call me kooky. I just like having the control that the pencil tool gives as opposed to the paintbrush. So um, come in, down in your properties for the pencil tool, and you want to change it depending on your um, DPI that you set, you know, you want a little thicker than one point. Usually I stick to like three or something like that. And the other thing you really need to remember is change this cap over here from round to square because you'll get a lot more control doing it that way. Uh, personal preference, I just like putting the miter on because it gives you the really nice sharp points when you connect lines and that's about all you need to know about the initial process. So um, let's go in here and start with with my computer acting funny. Um, <clears throat> so, oh god, that's dreadful. Let's, and the wonderful thing about this is you can just um, you know, kind of correct your errors as you go along. Um, snap is your friend. Generally, I leave snap on just because it helps me uh, reduce the number of points and stuff that I have. But this is the reason I like the pencil tool is because you can just come in here with your um, just a directional selection tool and pull and drag the line until you're satisfied with it. Um, so I would do this, and then I also will use like just the um, the line tool itself, and come in, and do stuff like this, and connect that on out. And so this is the kind of technique that I would use to get what I wanted. Um, so after I feel happy about how this is done right here, and I want to commit to that, I select this line, and I come in. And I go to Modify, Shape, and I convert lines to fills. Now on my computer I have that set as a shortcut Control shift l just because 
I don't know, it made sense to me, L being line, whatever. Um, so if you want to use a shortcut, go for it. It definitely speeds up the process um, when you're trying to just keep going with the drawing. Uh, so the next thing I'll do is I'll come in and um, this might not be exactly how I would do a finished product, but I would come in and start dragging in points and connecting them to kind of mess with the line thickness here. Get some points that are like really thin and then like where you want more dimension you do stuff like that and um, it's really just about you know taking your time playing with it seeing what you can do um, and yeah that's pretty much all there is to doing this vector kind of line work um, as far as just creating the lines go and the reason I'm using this like super bright hurt your eyes green is just because a lot of my line art and stuff that I trace, um, obviously when I scan it in, I've used black ink. And it just seems to me using this really bright green helps you kind of see the difference between the two of them. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much all there is to a vector job. Um, obviously, I can't emphasize enough changing this thickness down here of your line when you're doing you know outlines of the face and like bigger areas it's nice to use the big one but um, you know if you're doing hair it's always good to come in and bring it down at least a little bit because um, obviously the more smaller details you have you don't want to get stuck trying to uh, mess with little things that are blocked in gigantic lines uh, so yeah and definitely make sure before you convert your lines to fills that you're happy with how it looks because once you've done that it makes it a little more complicated uh, to go back and try and um, pull the whole line around and make it uh, do what you want it to so yeah that would be it it's just um, you know taking your time being patient with it and um, yeah, so have fun with that. Oh, one more thing. Uh, sometimes you'll have issues, and I still have no idea how to get around this. All I can say is just be patient with it. Um, but sometimes when you're connecting your lines, um, let's see if I can get it to happen here. You will come in and select the lines. And when you try to, no, it's not working. Um, but what will happen is you'll come in here and you'll have a bunch of lines that are connected and um, when you try to convert those to a fill, ah, it won't happen. Um, anyway, when you try to convert them to a fill, sometimes what will happen is if you have all these lines selected, there's something about the way they connect with one another that um, keeps them from all converting to fill. Uh, so if that happens, you're just going to have to come in and select, you know, a couple of lines at a time, break them down, and then try and select the whole group, and just keep playing with it until it actually does what you want it to. Uh, so it's, you know, all about patience, and uh, I think that's about it, really. I don't know what else there could be to uh, explain how I do my process. You know, you can just come in here after you've converted it and change the paint color to um, whatever you want, like black, or if you wanted to come in and make it like light brown, or you know, it's all up to you. And obviously, this doesn't look as great as some of my other stuff I've done, but it's a tutorial. It's just to quickly show you how to get on your own feet and do it. So have fun, and definitely uh, let me know how things turn out. And I will uh, give any other tips if you have any other questions. So. Thanks a lot for watching.